Welcome to Dad Perfect, a podcast for busy dads and our favorite heroes, the wives who stand with them. Dads who understand that investing in your family is the greatest investment you can ever make. Dads who are ready to dig deep and become the perfect dad for your family to become Dad Perfect. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Perfect Podcast. I'm David Rasmussen, your host. Thank you for joining me today. And welcome especially to all of you who are listening for the first time. And we always want to extend a welcome to the wives who are joining us. As fathers, we know that we really are nothing without you. Today, we will be introducing the principle, communicate clearly. And this is the sixth of our nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads. Communicate clearly is the third principle inside the core of foundation. The Remember, there are three cores. We have the core of focus, foundation, and force. These three cores for being a dad. And communicate clearly is the third principle within the foundation core. The other two principles within that core are be present and light your lighthouse. Communicate clearly is one that I chose to put into this core because it's the principle that opens the doors of the relationship. So you can be present and still not actually connect with your children. You can be there, you can be in the room, you can be at their event and not make a connection. You can also have a great deal of love for your wife and not have great communication. And often, I think that's what we encounter as husbands, is we feel the love. We know that our wives love us, but sometimes communicating is difficult. And this communication and learning how to communicate clearly with our children and our wife really opens the door to building close relationships and loving relationships. It opens the door to understanding, to feeling empathy and sympathy, to progress, you know, to improvement in relationships. And so this is why we talk about the importance of communicating clearly, why it's included in this foundational core of building relationships. And so as fathers, there's a lot that we can do to learn to communicate clearly with our families. And some of the guidelines that we won't talk about all of these today, but these are things that we go into in further detail uh, more in the discussion of the principles that we'll do later on and in the program, the Driven Dads program. But some of these guidelines are, we need to be kind in our conversation with our family. We need to be civil. Often we talk about these kind of things with, you know, of course, in business and in our community that we need to be civil with each other. We also need to be civil within our own family. Another one of these guidelines is focusing on uplifting conversations. Nobody likes being told what we're doing wrong. I had an experience recently in a conversation with somebody where that's all they kept coming back to. They kept telling me all the things I needed to improve on in work and improve on in my business. And I think, you know what? They weren't wrong, but I didn't like it. I didn't like being told all the things that I was doing wrong. And so we need to make sure that we're uplifting. We are conversations are focused on in helping people be better and uplifting and not always pointing out what's doing wrong. Another guideline that uh, is important to talk about, and we will talk a little bit more about this one today, is having mutually understood expectations or making sure our expectations are clear that we know that we're trying to work towards the same thing. And I'll share an example about that in just a minute. Another guideline is we need to make sure that we are listening to understand more than we are talking to be understood, right? So focusing on understanding rather than being understood. We also need to work on being multilingual. We're going to talk about that a little more today in this podcast as well, is being learning how to be multilingual. And then one of the last guidelines, and this isn't the complete list, but some of the ones that I am focusing on right now, and that is in our communications with each other within our family, we need to strive to seek intimate, personal understanding and connection. One of the challenges that we have, I want to start with one of our biggest challenges as men, and that is listening to understand. As men, we naturally want to jump in and solve problems. That's just something that's wired inside us. I'm not sure where it comes from, but we it's like we just want to solve everything, right? And we need to really resist that urge to want to solve everything, especially when we're talking with our children. Often just listening is all that they need. So I, my daughter, I have one daughter, she is 18 years old and she's amazing. But the earlier teenage years were a little challenging. A lot of the times because I was struggling, we were kind of struggling how to communicate with her. So her name is Natalie and Natalie likes to just talk. She likes to come home from her dance. She dances a lot and dances late at night sometimes. And now even with work, she can work late. And school activities are bringing her home late or hanging out with friends, bring her home late. And going on dates would bring her home late. And you can probably hear the theme here. She would come home late. So we would stay up 
we wanted to be present and my wife and I would stay up and want to talk with her and she would come home and she would just talk and share the activities of the day and often the drama of the day. And as a dad, I didn't understand that. And like this drama would drive me crazy. The girl drama for a dad is sometimes hard to deal with. I wanted to solve the problem. I wanted to get in there and just tell her, well, you need to do this or you should say this or you do this, but that's not what she needed. She needed me to listen. She needed me to understand her. What she wanted was to be heard. She likes to solve her own problems. And when I jump in too fast and try to tell her what she needs to do, she starts to resist. Now, she loves, she's very good at problem solving and she's very good at asking questions, but she doesn't always ask questions. She just, sometimes she just wants to talk and she wants to be heard. My wife is very good at listening. It's something I've had to follow her lead on right? and try to get better by following her and her example. She does a very good job of reflecting back when she's listening. She does that with all of us. She's so good at it. It's something that I am better for me right now. I, I'm not as good as reflecting back, but I try hard to just listen. I try hard to listen and I try hard to understand and not jump to giving advice. So that's one of the first guidelines is listen to understand rather than to be understood and rather than trying to jump in and solve the problems. So one of the challenges of that guideline is how do we know when we should just listen or when we should answer the question or when we should jump in and try to solve it? And a lot of times when you are actively trying to listen to understand your daughter, your son, your wife, whoever is talking with you, they'll let you know. It's not as difficult as it may seem. And for example, my daughter comes in and talks and she just talks and talks and talks. I know that she just wants me to listen, 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 but she will come to me and ask questions. And when she come. She comes a little quieter. She doesn't jump right into town. She's like, hey, dad, I have a question. She'll just right out of the chute. Boom. I have a question. And when she does that, I mean, that's obviously very simple. It's like, okay, she has a question. But what I've learned is I still have to resist going. I'll answer the question, but I have to resist going into a long diatribe of sharing my knowledge of what I think is vast knowledge, right? And then I get this teenager eye roll like, oh, here he goes again. Here goes dad into his di long diatribe. She wants to ask a question and have a conversation. And she wants me to answer the question, listen to her, share concerns, respond to her concerns, listen, you know, and just have this conversation. And she's very good at that. But that's different than when she just wants to talk and she doesn't ask a question. So I know now when she comes in, either late or at night after these activities or during the day, that if she does not ask a question, my job is to listen and reflect back to her what she is saying and what she is feeling and just let her know that I am here and that I hear her. So Knowing what your children want from you is very critical in learning how to communicate clearly with them. Another one of the things that I mentioned before is this mutually understood expectations. And I want to share something that happened with recently in a conversation I had. And this wasn't a conversation that I had with my family. This was actually a, a work-related conversation with someone who I will call John. So John and I met at a conference. We didn't have a lot of time to talk, but we thought, you know, both of us, I think, realized this, we wanted to talk more. And so we set an appointment to talk when we got back home and we got on that Zoom call and started to talk. And it didn't take long for me to realize that we both had a very different understanding of what the purpose of this phone call or, you know, Zoom call was. And I think John probably caught on to that as well. And we were both trying to make it work. We were trying to improve this situation by coming to some clarity on what our objective of this conversation was. And, and I was trying to offer him help, something that I could help with. And he was trying to offer me help. And it was about a 45 minute conversation. And I got to the end of that conversation and thought, wow, I wouldn't go so far as to say it was a waste of time. It was just like, that wasn't good, right? Like, I'm not sure he'll ever want to call and talk to me again. And, you know, I probably would be okay if we didn't call and have a conversation again. If we met in, you know, at another conference, I'm sure we'll be cordial with each other and follow up and see how things are going. But we were both well-intentioned in this conversation. We're both genuinely trying to have a productive conversation, but something went wrong. And I come back and think we had completely different expectations for the purpose and outcome of that conversation. And so the same goes with conversations. The same thing applies in conversations with our children. And again, with our wife and our family that sometimes we may need to step back and just clarify, what are we talking about? What are we trying to accomplish here? Because I've found that in conversation with my wife, there are times that we will be having a conversation and it starts to get a little tense. You know, and there will be some, get a little heated. We, my wife and I don't yell at each other. We don't do that. We don't argue in the traditional sense, but, but we can have tense conversations and some that are difficult. And I can notice that sometimes we've had conversations that have gone that way and then we get to the end or maybe we come back and reflect and, you know, after time has passed and realize, and the only thing that was creating that tension is we had different expectations. We actually agreed 
on the things that we were talking about, but we were trying to get to different points of decisions or conclusions. And so a lot of times just making sure that you are clarifying what is it that we're trying to achieve here? What is it that we are talking about? What's the purpose of this conversation? And clarifying that up front is very helpful. And my eldest son is very good at that. He'll come in and say, dad, I want to talk about this, right? And he spells it out. Or I have a question about this. And it's really nice uh, for me as a very left brain person, like, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that. Right. And then I still have to resist going into my long diatribes. I know that I tend to do that. It's probably why this podcast is a good thing for me. I can just keep on talking. <laughs> But uh, clarifying and making sure that you have mutually understood expectations for your conversations. In the future, we'll go into a little more. There's a little more to that guideline about mutually understood expectations. It's really important. And I'll just touch on it now to have mutually understood expectations about behavior, right? So communicating clearly isn't just about talking. It's about all forms of communication and having mutually understood expectations about behavior, about responsibilities in the home, about responsibilities in the family, and all of those kind of things are very important that we have very clear expectations that our children know very clearly and exactly what is expected of them in different situations, whether it's a conversation, responsibilities at school, all sorts of things like that. And so there's much more to that, but we're going to leave and go on to another one, and we'll come back to the expectations another time in another podcast, because this podcast is really just about introducing this principle, not diving into everything. I want to talk a little bit about, about this idea of just communication in general. I'll explain to you a little bit about how I see communication and what I mean by the word communication when I use it. If you can imagine, I see communication, clear communication as the unobstructed and pure transfer of thoughts, feelings, ideas, uh, intentions between two or more people. It's so much more than the words that come out of our mouths. Researchers have actually discovered that the words that we say the actual words that come out of our mouth only make up 7% of our communication when we're talking with someone face-to-face. -face. So that means the remaining 93% is being communicated via body language and tone of voice. So communication really is so much more than just the words we say. And you look at the word communicate, right? And the, the word communicate itself, it kind of shares the same root as commune. This starts with commune and uh, the root word commune, which has many definitions, but the definition that I think relates to this situation, the topic of communication, is the definition of to form a close personal relationship with someone. And some of the synonyms of commune are bond, relate, identify, sympathize, and empathize. All right, so it's, it's easy to see how learning to communicate clearly with our family members is critical in forming close bonds and relationships. Although our love for each other is the motivation behind those relationships, it's the clear communication that binds us together, that keeps us connected. Clear communication in a family is dynamic, and each member is unique. So just imagine walking into a room where every person in that room is speaking a different language. I mean, what would communication in that room look like? It, you know, I kind of imagine it would be very chaotic, probably very frustrating. But in many ways, this is not unlike living in a family especially if you are living in a blended family where you're thrust together and you don't have the opportunity to grow together. So you've probably heard of the term love languages. I learned about this concept uh, when I was studying family science back in the mid-1990s. The book, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman was published in 1992. So it was a fairly new book and his approach just, I mean, really seemed to open the doors of understanding of communication in these types of close loving relationships. And it was revolutionary for me. I'm, you know, I know a lot of people referred to it and it became a very popular book. And I think part of that is because he explained communication in a way that was clear and easy to understand. You know, basically he communicated well, right? Basically what this is, is every single member of your family has their own love language. And there's often some commonality within the family because you're related and you grow up together, but that's not always the case. And so our job as fathers is to become multilingual, right? We need to understand the love language of each of our children and our wife. And we also need to understand our own love language. We need to understand how we communicate as well so we can make sure that we are understanding when people communicate with us. But this can be many times an overwhelming task. And you can, sometimes you just connect with some of your kids, sometimes you don't. And so take some effort to do it. I connect well with my daughter. We can talk in a way that communicates well. My wife connects very well with my son. And right? so we work now. I've learned to communicate with my son very well, and she's learned to communicate with my daughter, but naturally we were drawn 
to different kids, I think. And so it's important as a father that you work to make sure you're building relationships with all of your children, not just the ones you're naturally drawn to. So I do have three tips. I always want to try to leave some kind of a tip and even in these introductory uh, podcasts for this overwhelming task of learning the love languages of your family. So the first tip is, I've already mentioned before, it's pretty simple, but it's a shift in mindset. And that is seek first to understand rather than to be understood. Make sure that you are looking to understand your children rather than having them understand you. Because once you understand them and you start creating that connection, they will hear what you have to say. They'll, they'll know that you care. And that's what matters. They need to know that you care, that you love them. Because anything you say, if they don't think you care, they don't care what you say, right? So referring back to this analogy of everyone in a room speaking a different language, the person who seeks to first understand will do much better than the person who is primarily concerned about getting others to understand him. Right? They will succeed in that room better if they seek to understand. The second tip is pay attention to how your wife and your children show you and others that they care. Right? So in almost every case, the way they express their love to you will be the way that they want you to show love to them. So for example, my daughter values time. She wants us to be there for her. So she makes gifts that require great thought and creation on her part. Easy to think that gifts are the, her love language, but it's really the time. She doesn't go buy gifts. She makes her gifts. She puts time into her gifts. So I need to carve out time for her. I need to listen to her. I need to go to her dance concerts. I just need to be with her. She values time. My wife is always giving gifts as well to family and friends. So again, it'd be easy to think, oh, gift is her love language. It is partly, but, and she's definitely a gift giver right? And she values giving, receiving gifts in return. But I've learned over time that it's not really the gift that she values. It's the thought and the sacrifice that went into that gift. It's the service behind the gift, which is a little bit different than the time. It's an interesting, similar, but it really is that service. She values helping and serving other people and giving gifts is one way that she does that. And so I try to look for opportunities to serve my wife by giving her the gift of my time and attention, because she knows that my love language is time as well. So by giving her of something that's valuable to me, my time in service to her really shows her that I love her. And it comes in little ways by helping get her computer camera working for a phone call, a Zoom call, for some time, reason it doesn't work for her. And then uh, helping get the boys ready for school or by taking the kids on a walk so she can have just one hour of quiet time to herself. Those are important things for her. And then the third is to notice the opposite what things make your children and wife feel frustrated or hurt? And then listen to what they tell you. Does your wife feel sad when you don't help her with dinner or chores around the house? If she does, her language might be service like my wife. Does your son get frustrated when you don't attend to soccer games? If so, his language might be time. Does your daughter constantly tell you about what kids at school said about her? If so, maybe her love language are words of affirmation. Those words have strong, are very powerful for them. So learning how to communicate clearly with your children opens the door to building these close relationships and loving relationships that you want to have with them that you will need as they grow and to help them progress. So it opens the door to understanding, to feeling empathy and sympathy and progress and improvement. So to review some of these guidelines as fathers, we can learn to communicate clearly with our children by implementing the guidelines I mentioned before, which just in review are be kind, be civil, focus on uplifting conversations. Make sure that you mutually understand each other, what the expectations are, and then try to listen, to understand, rather talking to be understood, work to be multilingual, these love languages, and then seek to have intimate and personal understanding and connection as you start communicating and building this communication with your family. I hope you've enjoyed this very brief introduction to the principle, communicate clearly. Like these other podcasts, as we do these introductions, there is so much more to discuss about this principle, and we will get into it more and more. We'll continue to explore each of these principles in more depth as the podcasts continue. In the next episode, we're going to introduce the principle love unconditionally. That's the first principle of the core of force. I'm really excited about this one. I'm excited about all of them. I love talking about unconditional love. I think unconditional love is what really empowers, especially your children, but your entire family to become the greatest that they can be. Thank you so much for listening today. This has been the Dad Perfect Podcast. Thank you for listening. If you want more, you can get it. More resources, more tips and strategies, more dads and moms sharing experiences, and much more. Simply go to dadperfect.com and sign up. That's dadperfect.com to sign up for more. Until next time, remember, you are the perfect dad for your family. 
you are dad perfect. Perfect.